Hello and welcome to Saturday Night Crafting on Sunday <laughs> again. Uh, it was my daughter's birthday party yesterday and it was a bit hectic and I didn't get around to getting my voiceover finished and getting it online. So for the third day in a row I am trying to get my voiceover done and hopefully you're joining me on Sunday and having a lovely time. Our focus tonight is on larger dies and getting more use out of them. We're going to create a couple different card styles in which I'll share with you how you can use these dies and stretch them to make a full card, not just use them as a panel on the front of your card. So I'm going to share with you a couple tips and trick techniques on the way. Uh, so hopefully you can get more life out of these kind of dies if you've got any of these in your stash. This one that I'm starting with is a waffle flower one. I absolutely love it. It's a really fun one. It's got these really cool little circles that are left over when you're done with it, which is quite fun. So the first thing I've done is I've measured my die. This die is five and a half by four and a quarter, so it's very much a North American style size. And what I'm doing here is I've cut myself a standard card base to that size in my fun holographic cardstock. And now I'm taking a piece of colored cardstock and I'm going to cut it so that it's just a little bit bigger than the width because my die will cut the width down for me and a bit longer so I want it to be or sorry the height um, a little bit bigger than the height and longer on the width because that width we're going to use and make ourselves a little tab so that it can attach to our card base so I'm lining up my die in my machine in my uh, big shot and I'm making sure that that very edge there on the right hand side is sticking out. I want my top cutting plate to only cover um, that left side of the die, but I don't want it to cover the cutting line on the right hand side. So underneath where that edge of my die is, is the cutting edge. So if you ran it through and the um, cutting plate was fully covered, it then would cut the whole entire piece and you'd get a nice rectangular piece. But if we take that die and do not put our cutting plate all the way over that edge, it doesn't cut that edge because the pressure is not applied. So now what we can go ahead and do is we can cut off those little um, stringy bits there on the end and then we can line up in our paper trimmer the edge that is sliced so that we can then cut all the way down our card if that makes sense. I'm not so good at describing things all the time but I'm trying to line up that little cut edge so that I can cut it nice and perfectly and straight along the whole thing. Now I am going to follow where that line is. There's a little indent and imprint from that cutting edge and I'm going to take my scoring blade which is the one on the bottom and I'm going to score that edge. And that way I know that that is exactly five and a half by four and a quarter, which is the exact size of my die, which is the exact size I've cut my card base to be. So now it will all line up beautifully. Apart from that holographic card sticks out just a little bit on the edge because of the crease um, going on in that fold that I just creased. So I'm gonna trim off a nice little sliver of this card just so that it tucks in there nice and evenly and then we get all the edges lining up beautifully and we don't have that holographic card sticking out anymore. So if your cards don't line up very well you can just trim off a little bit on the open edge of your card and it should slot right in there nicely. Now I decided I wanted less of a bulky bit hanging off the back so I'm going to just trim it down a little bit and then I mitered the corners slightly so I've got a nice little angle and now I'm going to go ahead and attach it to my card. Because it's holographic card, it's a bit slippy slidey, so I don't want to use liquid glue. I'm going to use the double-sided strong red tape instead, and I'm going to use that to attach it to my card. So I'm attaching it to the back side of the card. So you can see my um, card base there is uh, backwards, <laughs> and that's so that it can open up into a trifold card, I think. Trifold or bifold? Not 100% sure. <laughs> I see three sides, so I'm going to call it trifold. Um, and I decided in the end, actually, I just want to cover up that whole back. I don't really want much of that showing. I didn't like how that little tab looked, so I just glued on a little extra panel. Now I'm going to share with you in a couple seconds how you can just cut the whole panel so you don't have to do that. Don't forget, if you've got any of these little slivers and these little scraps, put them into your scrap jar. If you don't have one, make one. I do a lot of videos using up these scraps, and I always keep them on my desk ready to go. They're nice and handy. My next card that I'm going to use, I'm using this die from Alina Crafts. I'll link it down below. I'll try and link everything I can down below. If they're still available, they'll be in the description box for you. Now this one, I went ahead and I cut out a full panel. So instead of cutting it a bit longer, I cut it a full length 
Then I folded it in half. I scored it on that line that we had left over that didn't cut. And then I trimmed off the excess. You'll see it in just a minute. Don't worry, I do show you on another card. Now what you can do is you can then, if you have it cut as a singular card, you can then just pop in an insert and you're sorted. Or you can go ahead and add in another layer, the same as we did before. And you can have this trifold card and then your writing and the message that you want to write on it is hidden. And I'm going to share with you how you can cover up that hidden message if you don't want to do a trifold card, as well as what you can do um, at the end to decorate it if you have done a trifold card. So let's say you've got a big die like this. This is from Pretty Gets Gritty. I'll link it down below. I, and I know it's been selling out a lot, so it may not be available. Now for this card, I'm going to use my Big Shot Plus, not my regular Big Shot, because I need the A4 size. I'm turning my die the other direction so that I can get that nice edge that is not cut, and then that way I can make a card out of it and make the shape of the card. So if you've got a bigger die cutting machine, then that is very helpful because you can turn it the other direction. Otherwise, this will cut in a standard big shot. You just have to run it up and down rather than sideways. So again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to trim off the excess. I've got that little tab there. Now, I want my card to attach to a base. And so I'm just going to trim off that little edge there. So I'm going to line up my T ruler. And I've actually lined it up to, I think it was, uh, four and a quarter. So like a standard... Um, North American size card and then I'm just going to take my cutting blade trim it nice and close and then use my scissors to kind of finish off that a little bit there so I get that nice tab that I wanted before to make my card out of uh, but it's not going to kind of cover up that cool window top part and again I've scored it along where that cutting edge would be now this time instead of leaving it open and having it be this beautiful sort of window card we're going to close it off and make it look like more like a stained glass card so I've just roughly traced around the die and now I'm giving some little extra trims to it to make sure it fits right behind that panel nice and easily and it won't be blocked up too much. I'm using the dotted method of putting glue down. This means that I don't get too much glue and I don't get any smudging out anywhere. It just stays exactly where I want it to stay. I've put something to weigh it down while it dries for a second. And now I'm going to go ahead and cut myself out a panel that I can put on the back of it to cover up where the glue is going. Using my Arteza, or my Arteza, <laughs> I should say, um, alcohol pens, I'm going to color in the back. And the nice thing about this technique is we don't have to worry about getting messy. We just need to roughly stay in the lines, but as long as you don't go over those window panels, you'll be fine, because we're gonna cover it all up anyway, so that all the ugly can get hidden away and you won't notice it very much. Now I'm using the alcohol pens because they dry nice and fast and nice and easy and I know that it's a quick project then to do. I'm not having to wait long for dry time and sometimes vellum can be a bit slippy slidey um, so it doesn't want to stick as well. Now I always flip it over just to check that I like how it looks on the other side before I go ahead and finish it off and put that panel on the back. So now when I slide this panel on you can see straight through the card but we don't have, it's not crystal clear. So you can still put some writing behind there and it won't be dead obvious. I am gonna go ahead though instead and do a trifold panel card again. And I will just take the card that I cut to fit the size of my die. And I'm just going to trace it and cut it so that my card shape is the same shape as my um, die panel that I've got on the front. So nice and easy way to take your card and turn it, or sorry, to take your die and turn it into like a card making die, <laughs> if that makes sense. It's a great way to use up those big dies and get an, a little bit more life out of them and turn them into full size cards. So I will go ahead and cut myself a little white panel to go on the inside there for the message. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it as is and move on to my next card. Now for this next card, I'm using, again, another waffle flower die. This one's a cute butterfly one. And I'm going to do a full panel again for this card. Now this is another similar thing. We are going to go ahead and take some vellum and stick it behind to make this card. Now don't forget, if you have got any kind of dies with little pieces, save them, tuck them aside. Um, check out this video here on the top right hand corner where I show you how to make cards out of these leftover bits. It's a really fun video. Now I went ahead and glued on my vellum and then I colored it in with my Arteza markers using gray as kind of my neutral middle color. So I can take my little panel uh, that I die cut out and 
line it up over the top and I can see all the bits I missed or the bits that aren't completely covered up and I can go ahead and fix those. This die is great because it is the same on the front as the back so it's nice and easy to use on the back of your card as well as the front to cover it up. It fits absolutely perfect. Again off screen I did trim that right hand edge just a little bit so that it accounts for that fold and it folds over nice and smoothly. So do remember to trim off the edge that is on the inside of your card so that when you fold it, it folds nice and flat. So there we have that card. Now we're going to go on to how I decorated them. So for the first card, I used this happy birthday die from Alina's shop, some holographic foil, some sequins, and now I've got this beautiful card. And with the writing even on that white bit, it will be a lot less noticeable than if it was completely see-through. For my next card, I use this um, set here, which I got from Craft Stash. Um, if it's still available, I'll link it down below. But I stamped out those balloons, die cut them out, covered them in glossy accents, and colored them with my Arteza pens before I put the glossy accents on. And now I've got a really fun trifold card with a belly band that holds it together. So to make a belly band, I just cut a one inch strip of white card and I folded it loosely around my card, glued it together and covered up that seam with my balloons. So really quick and easy way to make a card and add something nice to the front of it. For my next card, I use these new uh, filigree, I think they're called, uh, border dies from Craft Stash. So I picked these up this week. They actually arrived the day I made the card, which was quite fun. Uh, and this Pretty Gets Gritty uh, stamp set I used as the flower in the background, stamped it with a really, really light ink. Now for this one, I used a double belly band. This was the card that I originally did with the white on the inside so you could see through it. I didn't end up putting that purple piece in there because I loved it too much uh, and just changed the design. But if you didn't have that purple layer in there and you just wanted it to be a normal flat card, this way, all that writing underneath, if it were to look like this, would be covered up. So you could put your message right there in the middle of the card and it would be nice and tucked behind that panel. So also if you had a rectangular shape, then you could do that with it. Now this one, I wasn't sure what to do. I had these little strips left over and I thought those would make a really cute, fun belly band for this card. So I could put those on there, but I wondered what your thoughts were, how you think I should finish this card because I got a bit stumped. I wasn't sure what I should do with it. So if you have an idea for me how to finish off this card, put it in the comments below. I'll try and finish it off this week and shove it on my Instagram. My links for my Instagram, my Facebook group and my buy me a coffee are in the description box as well below. So if you want to check those out, they're there. Thank you so much for hanging out with me tonight. I'm sorry it was a bit fast paced, but I had a lot I wanted to share with you. And hopefully you got some inspiration and can get your dies out and create some fun projects. Take care and bye for now.